So, hello everyone and welcome to this next lecture. So, this is a continuation of the DC to DC lecture series and in this lecture I am going to start with the SEPIC converter so, because in the last lecture we ended with the chuck converter. So, as always before we start this lecture series just a little bit of brief background. In case you are interested in these kind of video lectures on Python on power electronics in general and how to use Python in power electronics, I do have some full length courses if you file these course these lectures to be a little too light. I have one comprehensive simulate simulation course on power electronics using Python on the MOOC website Udemy and in this I go through the entire process of how you can simulate with Python. So I have installation of software some basic tutorial on python basic theory about power electronics and finally a case study of how to simulate a buck converter including closed loop control and if you are also interested in something a little more about digital signal processing and control i have another course on the digital signal processing using python for power engineers and in this i talk about how we can you can install how you can use design a digital filter using python and also analyze its behavior using frequency response characteristics all using python so, these two courses are available in case you need it and the links are provided in the description for this video. So, with this background I will get back to what we were trying to do. So, the past four lectures we talked about the buck converter, the boost converter, the buck boost converter, the chuck converter. So, in this one I will start with the next one which is a sepic converter. So, to begin with I just go ahead create new simulation. And I'll just name this SEPIC converter. I'll just give the same description. You can write in detail if you want, but for this video, this is good enough. The time duration is one second, that's good enough. Integration time step of one microsecond is also good enough. The time step of data storage I will reduce from 10 microseconds to 1 microsecond just to make it the same as the integration time step and therefore also improve the accuracy of the plots. The output data file can remain as it is. Slice the output file, no need. Number of slices doesn't matter when this, when I am not slicing the output file. And now comes to the directory of the circuit files. So for that let me go over to my files. This is where I stop with the chuck converter. And let me create a new one. And I will call this sepic converter. So to begin with, let me go and copy the chuck converter over and this is where I was with the chuck converter. So all we have to do is I can just close this down. And I will rename this file as sepic converter. So to begin with, let's go and edit this circuit, simulator, circuit file because first thing we need to do is we need to start off with our circuit. Now the reason why I am starting this chuck converter is because a sepic converter is actually a very minor modification of the chuck converter, a very minor modification, right. So let's talk about that here. So the first thing we need to do, let me just zoom out a little and this is the sepic converter. So, in short, what the SEPIC converter is, is as I've already talked about in the previous lectures, there is a voltage source with an inductor and a switch in parallel. There is a decoupling capacitor, there is a free wheel diode, there is another inductor which is like an output stage inductor and there is finally the filter capacitor which forms the output bus and at the output of the bus we connect the load. Now, in a SEPIC converter as we already talked about, when the switch is turned on, the inductor charges from the input through the anti-clockwise direction, right. And if the capacitor is charged, it also discharges through the switch S1 and thereby charging the inductor, right. And when the switch is turned off, the inductor and the voltage, they both charge the capacitor and free wheel through the diode. And at this point of time, the output inductor discharges through the diode and thereby charges up the output capacitor. So, this is the path of energy. Now, let me copy these lines and let me just replicate them here. The reason is because actually, I, let me not go that far down. 
The reason is because a CEPI converter is just a minor modification of a chuck converter. Now, in a CEPI converter, the first stage is exactly the same. All right, everything is exactly the same. The change happens only after the decoupling capacitor. Right? So up till here, we are exactly the same. From this part on, these two branches change. So the diode comes into the series branch. The inductor comes into the parallel branch. So what that means is, let me just cut this here and place it here. And let me just delete this because I have three components. So, you see what I have done? What I have done is I have changed the position of the inductor and the free wheel diode. In the beginning, the free wheel with the chuck converter, the diode was in the parallel path and the inductor is in the series path. Now this is reversed. So now what actually happens here? When the switch is turned on, the input continues to charge the inductor through the switch. There is a clockwise flow of current. This does not change. Now, initially the capacitor is uncharged. Assuming, of course, everything is initially uncharged, which is a fair approximation. At that time, nothing happens in the next part of the stage. When the switch is turned off, the energy in the input and the inductor now charge the capacitor. Now, with the chuck, with the chuck converter, this current would flow through the diode. Because remember, the diode has a polarity pointing downwards. If the diode has a polarity pointing downwards, then this current will flow downwards because the diode is the path of least resistance, right? But now the diode is in the series path. The diode is not in the parallel path. Therefore, the current in, that is the energy in the voltage, input voltage and the inductor will now continue to flow through the diode in the series path all the way to the output capacitor. So now there is a direct link between the input voltage and the output. There is this direct link. Okay. Now, what happens after that? When the switch is turned on again, the reverse cycle repeats. Therefore, that is the input continues to charge the inductor through the switch in this clockwise direction. But now, since the capacitor has a charge, right, the capacitor will now charge, will now discharge through this through the path, through this path. That is, it will discharge through the switch and will now charge this inductor. Right? Will charge this inductor. Now, in this case, it will not pass through the diode. The reason is because this diode is in the series path and the polarity is pointing towards the right. If the polarity is pointing towards the right, the current cannot flow in the anti-clockwise direction because in that case, it will have to flow in the reverse through the diode, which the diode will not allow. So, in the, this condition, when the switch is turned on, the output is not served at all. The output is completely cut off. In the chuck converter, the inductor, the output inductor continues to charge the output capacitor through the diode. Or no, rather through the, through the switch. But now in this case, when the switch is turned on, the, the inductor cannot charge this output, output capacitor at all. This is all there is to a SEPIC converter. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these lines because we don't need them anymore. We are now in the SEPIC converter and we move a SEPIC converter to the top. So, this way we have removed the chuck converter and brought in the SEPIC converter. Alright, so here again, like I said, with the chuck converter and with the SEPIC converter, it is now very important to understand the role of this decoupling capacitor. With the CEPI con with the chuck converter, the role of the decoupling capacitor was very simple. It would take energy from the input and provide energy to the output. The input and the output are never connected. With the chuck with the CEPI converter, the input and the output are now connected. Why? Because the diode is now in the series path and has a polarity towards the right. Therefore, this is connecting conducting current in the forward direction. So therefore, there is a path to the output. 
Now, said that there is one major advantage that is obvious with respect to this epic converter. In the case of the chip converter, the output voltage is reversed in polarity. That's because of the nature of the current. Here, since there is a direct coupling between the input and the output, when the switch is turned off, there is a direct flow from the input to the output. There is a direct flow in the clockwise direction. And because there is a direct flow in the clockwise direction, the polarity of the output is the same as the polarity of the input. So therefore, the polarity of the output is in the upward direction. right? So the positive, the upper terminal is positive with respect to the negative lower terminal. The advantage of course of such an arrangement is that you can now ground one terminal. With the chuck converter you cannot ground one terminal because one is positive, the upper terminal is positive and the output the negative, the lower terminal is negative, positive. So this becomes a little tricky in terms of grounding power supplies. But with the separate converter this is much easier. Right? So now that we said this let me go and just add this and let me zoom in a little. So, as before, we go to our file browser, go to properties, copy the parent folder, for some reason it did not copy, now it did, we save it, so which means everything was okay we can come back to the main page. So, let's go and add this file. Let me add this epic converter and let me call it epic converter. Save the file and let me process the circuit schematics and it says there is an error. So let me look at what the error is. Check branch continuity at 1x. Let me see what 1x is. And yes, 1x is indeed broken. So this needs to be a wire. This just happened because I was copy pasting these components. There are three components in this branch. There are two components in this branch, which is why we ended up missing one component. Anyway, the circuit simulator will pick it up. When this happens, you just have to click add schematic so that you get the button again and then you process it. And this time the circuit has no detectable errors. So we are good to go. So we'll go back to the main page and here let me go to the edit circuit parameters. In the edit circuit parameters let's do a little trick. Let's go and copy the chuck converter parameters to the sepic converter. Paste it and let's just change the name. The reason is because all our components are the same. So why not just take advantage of that fact. So let me go to the edit circuit parameters, go to view components and you see these are all the default parameters. So you can just upload the epic converter, upload this file. And let me see if something, yes, some have changed. Some have changed and some have not. And the reason is because there are some discrepancies and we'll talk about this very soon. So, since the lecture is already getting a little too long, I would like to stop this lecture now. And in the next lecture, we will edit the circuit parameters and also start with the control. So, with this, if you have any doubts about what I did, please do post either as a comment or email me or message me on social media, whichever is your preference. Otherwise, I will see you in the next lecture next week where we will expand on this and start editing the circuit parameters as well as adding control and running an open loop control, running an open loop simulation. So, thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Goodbye for now.